Five settings that you should definitely be using on your Sony a7R Mark V. Let's go. Number one is overheating, and so far I haven't been able to get this to overheat, but I'm sure in certain situations that will be possible, especially with the environment if you're filming outside in the sun, it's probably gonna happen at some point, and we want to minimize the possibilities of that happening. So let's begin with changing the temperature settings inside the A7R Mark V. Press the menu button and go to the setup section of the menu. Go to number eight power setting option, which is actually page 51 of 55. Don't you just love Sony menus, eh? And we want to change the auto power off temperature to high. This will change the threshold when this camera thinks it's overheating, the actual temperature threshold much higher than what it normally is. Yes, it will get very warm. I recommend if you're doing any kind of filming on the A7R Mark V that you actually pull out the screen away from the back because behind here is the actual heat sink for any of the Sony cameras. And that allows all the heat to get away from the camera as quickly as possible. We move on to number two. Having different settings for your stills mode and your movie mode is something that I found on my Sony A7S Mark III, and I've set it up on pretty much every camera I've had from Sony since then. To set this up, press the menu button and go to the setup menu. You want to go to page three, operation customize, or page 44 of 55 in the grand scheme of Sony menus, and scroll down to different set for still slash movie. Now it's up to you which ones you have ticked, but whichever ones you tick, you can have different options for both photo and video. So let's say you're filming in video mode and you have your shutter speed of one over 50. You can go over to photo mode and have a completely different shutter speed. And as soon as you go back to video mode, it will automatically go back to one over 50. The ones I recommend are aperture, shutter speed, ISO and pitch profile. So it means that I also have the pitch profile of S-Log3 set up for just video mode. But as soon as I go into photo mode, I don't need S-Log3 when I'm shooting photos. This setting is amazing when it comes to hybrid shooting and you're wanting to get between photo and video much quicker. Number three is the focus breathing compensation, which I believe is fairly new when it comes to Sony full frame cameras. I know that the Sony A7S III doesn't have it. I can't remember whether the A7 IV has it. Um, I wanna say no, but I only had it for around a week, so don't quote me on that. But the A7R Mark V does have it, which is amazing because this has it, even though it's a photo camera, and yet this doesn't, and that's a video camera. So go figure. Something to be aware of is that it's only available in video mode and not all lenses are supported by this. There's some third party lenses which may be or may not be supported. I know that some of the Sony lenses aren't actually supported. My 35mm f1.8 isn't supported, but my 16-35 2.8 G Master is and the rest of my G Master lenses are. So maybe it's just G Master, I'm not 100% sure. The focus breathing compensation when enabled does give your image a slight crop, but because of that crop, when your camera is wanting to pull large amounts of focus, let's say from the background through to the foreground, the edges of the image doesn't scale, it doesn't contract, it doesn't expand. This feature is used to mimic cine lenses. Cine lenses have minimal amounts of focus breathing when wanting to pull focus. Focus breathing compensation, or in cine lenses, just the lack of focus breathing is a really good feature because it allows the DP to be able to minimize the disorientation when wanting to pull focus, but also not change the field of view to the viewer. To enable this, press the menu button and go to the shooting menu. You want to go to image quality, which is page five of 55. Again, Sony menus, great. Go to lens compensation and then change the breathing compensation to on. Auto white balance, if I'm honest, is something I stay away from. It's okay when it comes to doing photos because it's just a single photo and you can easily correct it when it comes to Lightroom. But when it comes to video, it's a lot harder to correct, especially when it's changing in between shots or even in the middle of a shot. But if you're using the Sony a7R 5 for video and you want to use auto white balance, this setting will seriously help you. What we're going to enable is the auto white balance lock, but what you need to do first is assign it to one of your custom buttons on your Sony a7R Mark V. Press the menu button and go to the setup menu. Operation customize and then choose which mode you want to set up the auto white balance lock in. For me, if I'm ever gonna use auto white balance lock, I'm only ever gonna use it in video, so I only change it in the video mode. Find the button you wish to assign in here and then we need to go in and find the auto white balance lock in the settings. Go to the pink menu and then you want to go to white balance and then auto white balance lock toggle. 
Now when you're in video mode or whichever mode you set up your auto white balance lock toggle to be enabled in and obviously you need to set your camera to be in auto white balance. When you press your custom button in the bottom right hand corner of the screen you will see AWBL which is obviously short for auto white balance lock. From this point onwards your white balance will not change in your camera unless you change the shooting mode or you press the button again which you've assigned to the auto white balance lock. The final setting I'm gonna go through can be used in both photo and video mode, but I mainly use it when it comes to video, and it just goes to show that the a7R5 isn't just a photography camera nowadays. What we're going to set up is the variable shutter on the Sony a7R Mark V. A variable shutter is, in theory, a very similar thing to a shutter angle, which you would find on something like the Sony FX3. And this variable shutter will help you combat any flicker in the background of any of your videos. Again, I assigned the variable shutter to a custom button on the camera because I don't want to use the variable shutter all the time. Sometimes just setting it to 1 over 50 is perfectly fine. Sometimes you've got to dial it in that little bit more. Again, what you need to do is go to your operation customizer. You need to choose the mode you're wanting to set up the toggle button for. Once you've chosen the custom button you wish to assign the setting to, you want to go to the shooting menu. Then choose shutter and silent, which is page 5, and then variable shutter select. Now when you're in that shooting mode, you can press that custom button and you will see your shutter speed change from a fraction to a decimal point. Then you can use the dial that you use for shutter speed to dial it in that little bit more to help get rid of the flicker. If at any point you want to go back to having fractions rather than decimal points, just press that toggle button once again. There is so much more I could say about the Sony A7R Mark V, but that is it for today. If you have any tips or tricks or settings that you've come across in the Sony A7R Mark V, let me know down in the comment section below. And if you want all my settings that I use to nail the focus in all my wildlife photos, then check out this video right here. As always, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit the like button. Subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And if you do, I'll see you right there. Thank you very much for watching. Take care.